Hello, hello, and welcome again to a Beatles program that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show in which we've been talking about what's been happening in the news with the Beatles. I'm Ken Michaels, and some of you might know me for another Beatles show that I host called Every Little Thing, being joined by my co-host, that being Steve Marinucci, who writes for many different columns and best known for writing for Beatles Examiner. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone. Well, this is going to be an interesting show because I must say that um, we have a, a major announcement to make about some changes that are going to be happening with things we said today, effective with our next show. And um, I'm That's really right. excited about it. I, I know you are, yes. Steve. Oh, yes. This and, is going uh, to be a lot of fun. And um, um, we'll talk about it towards the end of the show, but... Um, we're revamping the show in a number of ways, and I think that uh, many of you will be delighted for the changes that we're about to make. But we'll talk about that a little later on. We've got a few news items that we want to get to for this week, and we'll start with something that you just wrote about today on the 20th of November, and that's about a new McCartney app. Why don't you tell the folks about it, Steve? Paul McCartney announced this morning that he was in cooperation with the Jaunt, the company Jaunt, releasing a virtual reality app of a song from the Candlestick Park show. Uh, which we were at. Which we, which you and I were at. Um, what they've done is they've taken Live and Let Die, and they've got a virtual reality app. Uh, it's free. You can get it through Google Play, and you need to get the full experience. You need a headset which I do not have. I was able to see the the app without the headset um, in uh, an Android phone. It's not available for Apple, which is interesting because usually Beetle things have a tendency to go with Apple, and this is the first time I can remember anything doesn't, you know, something uh, is not uh, available for Apple too. But, um, Hmm. yeah, uh, but, uh, yeah, this is uh, Android only. And it actually, if you have an Android tablet, as I do, you won't be able to get it there either. You can get it through the phone. And there is going to be, there is going to be a Windows version coming for some um, applications. Uh, Oculus Rift is going to be, for Mac and Windows, we'll have it. And also Samsung's Gear uh, VR will also have it. I'm not sure whether that's uh, Mac or or, uh, or what, uh, Android or what. But right now it's only available for Android 5 and 6-inch phones. And it's available from the Jaunt website or from Google Play. If you search McCartney Jaunt, as I did this morning, you'll you'll find it. But uh, it's interesting. It's 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 just the one song. You can I, I, I one thing I was doing with my with my wife's Android phone. She has the Android phone in the house. Is that if you move the phone around, the camera angle in the uh, on the song changes. So you can see different aspects of the of the the song that way. Um, but if you want to see um, the three D virtual reality, you need the headset. So. But, um, wow! So you feel like you're moving around in the stadium, right? Well, as yeah, it's playing, right? You can also see you can also see the audience if you turn it the right way. You can you actually see audience members. You might be able to pick yourself out in the uh, in in the app. <laughs> Although uh, I, I, you know, I was uh, not that. I was like 20 rows back, so it's not that easy. But yeah, I mean, you can. It was you know, it was at night. The sun had already gone down by the time he did that song. So, but still, th- there you go. And it's a, it, it's interesting. And apparently, uh, according to one story I saw, McCartney had would had been given a demo of the application beforehand, and and it was that that uh, got him all excited and uh, had them do this or had them do the filming. And I remember seeing the cameras going all over the place, the virtual reality cameras moving around. And I did not know, we did not know at that point that that's what that was doing, but that's what it was. There were cameras 
um, floating around in front of the stage. In fact, I remember seeing them because they were, you know, they kept going in front of my view and I'm going, what, what is this? You know, and that's exactly (laughs) what, that's exactly what it was. So, so can you see, can you see a view of Paul and the band doing the song really up close? And then can you zoom back? Can you get a, you know, a front view and a long view? Well, again, I don't have the headset, so I really couldn't play around with it that much. Okay. Most of the view is from the back of the stage looking out. At least that's what it was when I tried it this morning. And again, I, you know, not having the headset, I really didn't have the full virtual reality to be, be able to go all the way around it. But I could, by turning the phone, the image does move. So there is that, there is that, if you get, if you understand what I'm saying. So it's, uh, hmm. yeah, it's interesting. I would guess that with the headset, you can go all over and that's, you know, what you're supposed to be able to do. It's supposed to be a 360 degree virtual reality environment. So, and it's free. That's the, uh, yes. that's the really interesting part that it's free. So even better, <laughs> even, even better. And, uh, the question is, will, you know, he do something with, given that this is recorded, is something else coming? You know, that's a good question. We don't know. So, you know, you got to admit, McCartney is really involved with today's technology and in trying to find ways of, you know, adding stuff to his website all the time. And, you know, he tries to keep up to date on all this stuff. Right. So let's move on to another topic, which is, and this is kind of timely. Actually, by the time that this show goes up, there may be some news about what President Obama is about to do with uh, issuing an executive order regarding the immigration uh, problem in our country. But uh, Leon Wilds has been in the news lately, and he was the immigration attorney that John and Yoko hired when John was facing all of his deportation problems. And so he's been in the news because he was interviewed on MSNBC by... um, Lawrence. Lawrence O'Donnell. Right. And um, so what what they're trying to say, at least what O'Donnell seems to want to say, is that the case with John set a precedent for what's about to happen right now in improving the, the immigration status here in our country. Right. And that was really that was really kind of interesting to, to hear the whole discussion. Basically, what. The, the, the what was used in Lennon's case was called prosecutorial discretion, but that's exactly that's what is being used now to, you know, keep people in um, the country or that would enable them to stay and legally work while their cases were pending, and that's and O'Donnell said that that would form the justification for the order. Although as of while we're sitting here. We haven't heard it yet. We don't know exactly what the order is going to be. He's announcing that tonight. But still, that's an interest. It's interesting that John was apparently the precedent-setting case in this yeah. situation. And I, I, you know, it never even occurred to me until watching the show that it, that uh, John had anything to do with it. And what was really interesting was that Weil said that John knew. It was it was setting a precedent, and he hoped that he hoped that Wiles would would write about it and publish articles. And Wiles has written about it, but um, and he still teaches and lectures about it today. Um, so it's and his son has also followed in his footsteps as an immigration attorney, which is really cool. His son his son Michael. So it's uh, it, it's it's you know this whole thing. Back from when John, you know, started, and back when the Nixon administration worked really hard to try and get him tossed out of the country, it was Leon Wiles who dug up the means by which John was able to stay and get his green card. So there we go. Yeah, that was such a, a serious situation with John and I and looking back he went through hell for several years and it was in the news quite often I always remember thinking back to uh John's deportation problems when I bought the sometime in New York City album if you remember there was mm-hmm. a sheet there it was a petition that that uh for us to sign to help John stay in America 
Boy, you know, so, I, uh, no, I don't remember the petition. Uh, I mean, I bought the album when it came out, and I, I don't remember the petition. I do remember, you know, the immigration thing was all over that album, but the petition, I I do not remember the petition. But I'll take your yeah. Album. Wow. That's a, and I and and one of the thing and I included a clip in the story I wrote from the Tom Snyder interview. If you remember, he talked all about that with Tom Snyder. Um, oh yeah. And so, it was a it was a very interesting time, and you know. And also that that interview, because you know John could be so fascinating, and at various times, you know the tone of his voice could be so different. He could be. You know, angry one minute and then very serious the next. And he was very toned down in this interview with, with Leon Wilds, you know, because he really wanted to look good for the camera and look serious, you know. And um, every aspect of John Lennon's life was fascinating. But right. that interview was, was a very important one. The Dick Cavett interview that uh, John and Yoko did also had discussion about Wilds. And if you have the to Cavett DVDs uh, of the interview, it, it'll be there. But yeah, I mean, he 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 talked about it a lot. It it was uh, you know it, he normally I mean you know how normally he would take things half seriously, but that was one time when he did not, he, and it was it it forced it kind of forced him to be a little more serious, and uh, it was a, an interesting chapter. And it's interesting that the reverberations from that are still living on today so right okay how about uh talking about stella mccartney well that was kind of interesting stella got an award and um everybody showed up um she got the woman's leadership award from the uh, lincoln center corporate fund and Yo mm -hmm. yoko was there and and paul showed up and and he was there he flew in from brazil Okay. Just to show support for his daughter for this. Right. Which was really nice. And Yoko was there. And Paul and Nancy. And, yep. And Yoko. And there were a, there were a lot of celebrities and there were video tributes and she got uh, she got quite an honor there. Well, to me, the big surprise of the evening, first of all, you, you didn't say Olivia. Olivia Harrison was there, but so was Danny Harrison. Mm -hmm. And Danny performed on stage and he did two songs and this is according to an article that um, I read on Showbiz 411. But um, in fact, Danny said a couple of really nice things about Stella. And I have read that Danny's kind of close to the McCartney kids. But um, he did say that he thinks of, of Stella as his big sister. And he also went on to say that um, his quote was, Stella has looked out for me my whole life. And so he performed the song Love of My Life, which is an Everly Brothers song, which apparently is a favorite of Stella's. But the big shock of all, he did Live and Let Die on stage. That must have been interesting. I mean, I, <laughs> I'd i love to see a video of that. I mean, uh, we've seen him do his father's songs, but I've never seen Danny do any of the other Beatles songs. Or songs that his father did in the Beatles. Mm -hmm. Like recently at the George Fest, he did Savoy Truffle. But, um, yeah, to do Live and Let Die, I I've got to see a video of this. <laughs> well, there, it isn't. I, uh, I just looked it up. Uh, I'm just looking it up on uh, YouTube. It's not there yet. So oh, I know. If, it's, if somebody's got it, they haven't put it up there yet. That'll be a... Uh... What a cool thing to do. I mean, Danny is, Danny is a, he's a cool guy. Mm -hmm. He really is. <laughs> so, so there were video tributes. Video tributes were 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 um, shown from people like Chrissy Hine and um, Doris Day. You know, God bless her. She's ninety years old now, yep. and she was praising Stella for her um, work in animal rights. Gwen Stefani, Bono, Quincy Jones, and a lot of people were there in the audience, like uh, Lauren Michaels, Seth Meyers. Uh, Woody Harrelson, mm -hmm. a lot of good people there. Right, so that's that's, that's very cool. And speaking of Danny Harrison, he posted on Instagram uh, yesterday that he's in the studio working on a new album with the new number two. With the new number two, right? So right, maybe at some point we'll start talking about the Beatles' kids and their music. Maybe who knows? Danny's got a big following out there. There's no no question about it. Well, you know, you can catch him live with the new number two. They do tour occasionally. 
and um, and certainly Sean has been out there. Right. So if you want to follow the Beatles kids, and James did a tour recently in support of his first uh, full album. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that um, a lot of Beatles fans would be very pleasantly surprised at how good they are on stage as performers, as musicians, and also how well they're, how good their music is. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of other really quick things um, to mention. VH1 is going to include footage from McCartney's um, Bonnaroo appearance in a Thanksgiving special, Thanksgiving night, called the very right. Bonnaroo Thanksgiving. And the other thing is that um, the British Invasion tour uh, with uh, Denny Lane, Peter Asher, Chad and Jeremy, Billy J. Kramer, Mike Pender, Searchers, and Terry Sylvester is going to be hitting the East Coast starting in February. So, right. So, and I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I missed that uh, when it came out here last year, unfortunately. Well, I got to see it. It's, it's a great show. It really is. Mm-hmm. I mean, in so many ways, you, you feel like you're, you're untouched by time. I mean, I've seen all of these acts on their own, mm-hmm. and you can close your eyes, and they sound almost identical. Chad and Jeremy. You know, the harmonies are so intact. They're one of those people who is kind of like Simon and Garfunkel. They could not perform for 10 years, get back in, on stage and sound almost the same. Right, right. <laughs> so it's just something so, you know, bred in them mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, it's, it's wonderful. Denny Lane sounded great. Billy J. Kramer sounds fantastic as far as I'm concerned. And he's uh, so into performing a mixture of his old stuff and his brand new album called I Won the Fight, which is really a very good album. Right. So um, if you can catch their tour, there are 10 dates, and it starts on February the 22nd, uh, beginning at the City Winery in New York City. So uh, do get a chance to see them. Originally, if you recall, Jerry Marsden was going to be part of the original lineup, and then he fell ill. He had pneumonia, but um, he has recovered from that. I'm kind of surprised he wasn't added to the bill. Right, right. Yeah, that would have been nice if – if uh, I was really looking forward to seeing him um, touring again. Um, uh, I did see the British Invasion tour in the when it came through in the 80s, and uh, he was – he headlined it then. And it was him, Chad and Jeremy, the Mercy Beats, Freddie and the Dreamers. There you go. Mm. With Freddie with, – uh, with Freddie Garrity. And the searchers, but it wasn't Mike Pender's searchers. It was the other searchers. It was Frank Allen and and those guys. And um, so, yeah, I did see that tour in the '80s, and it was a great tour. That I'll never forget that ever. That was fantastic. Mm. Um, yeah. Also, I don't know if you want to bring this up, but um, it's been getting more attention, and that is a new film that was inspired by John Lennon, and it's called Danny Collins. And um, Al Pacino is going to be in this film, and he plays an aging rock star who's trying to make amends with his enemies um, after he reads a letter that was um, uh, written by John Lennon, a personal letter from John. So um, that's going to be coming out sometime next year, at least that's what I've been reading. Mm -hmm. And Ryan Adams, Ryan Adams has been tapped to do the score for the film. And uh, Annette Benning will be in it, as will Christopher Plummer and Jennifer Garner. Uh, yeah, the the trailer for that uh, has been floating around uh, today, and uh, I don't know if it was out there before today or not. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. And I can't believe how uh, Pacino looks actually very good in that trailer. I've seen him previously, and he hasn't looked as good as he does now. So he's looking really good. So okay, well. Something else to look forward to there, right? So you want to do the announcement? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's let's have the big let's make the big announcement. You want me to make it, or you want to do it, or should we? Uh, we'll we'll both do it. Okay. All right. So we have a major announcement to uh, to make here regarding things we said today. Steve and I, as you know, have been doing the show now for the past two years, a little more than two years. Has it been that? And has it it's been always that long. Really, it's been that long. Yeah. Well, wow. This is what our our one hundred and eighth or ninth show. Yeah, I haven't I haven't uh, watched over a hundred shows, almost one hundred and twenty. The format of the show has always been that we're a news centric show. It it all revolves around what's happening in the news, and that is going to change, in part. But the big change of all is that we are going to be adding three 
brand new co-hosts of the show. And they're all people that I'm really proud to have associated with this program because they, they've done a lot of work on the Beatles for quite a number of years. Their work has been outstanding. And um, Al Sussman is one of them. He's been writing for Beatle Fan Magazine since 19, the end of 1978. And consistently, for the most part, for all these years, think about that, 36 years writing about the Beatles. And also, he wrote that uh, recent book called Change in Times 101, mm -hmm. which uh, really involves all the changes in America that happened right after the Kennedy assassination, including, of course, the Beatles uh, coming to America. It's not really a Beatle book, as Al has said, but it's all about the changes that happen in our culture, the Beatles, of course, being one of the biggest parts of that. But um, So he has authored that book. And actually, all three people that we're adding to the show are all writers for Beatle Fan. Right. And they've all, they've all been guests on this show. And so Alan Cozen is another person who he's been working for the New York Times. I mean, you talk about uh, a newspaper that has such respect in the industry, the New York Times. He is a culture reporter there, and he's been writing a lot about uh, through the years about um, classical music. He's been their, their writer in that department. And um, he's also been writing for Beatle Fan. He's authored a few Beatle books, including the recent ebook called um, uh, Got That Something, How I Want to Hold Your Hand Changed Everything. Mm -hmm. And um, and he's been on our show a few times. And then we've got Robert Rodriguez on the show, and he has authored several Beatle books, the Fab Four FAQ series, the book that came out a couple of years ago on Revolver, and more recently one called Solo in the 70s. So all three guys have done tremendous work. And... Um, it's kind of important to me to have people on the show for whom the Beatles have meant so much that they've not only have done really outstanding work, but they've been doing it for a very long time because it shows how important the Beatles are really in their lives. And it's not just a passing thing that they work on for, you know, a quick moment in time. You know, they have such impressive resumes. And so it's nice to have those three people to join us to add their perspectives on the Beatles. And um, I also think that it's kind of important to have a few more people who are first generation fans who lived through that time and really experienced it. And whereas someone like myself, I, I pride myself in the knowledge that I have from listening to all the music and listening to it thoroughly and especially all the solo music and studying as much as I can. But I was a little kid growing up in the 60s, and there's only so much I could have absorbed as a little kid. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys, well, except for Robert, because he's actually the youngest one of the group, but they really lived through it. So they can tell us a lot more of what it was like in that time, uh, you know, having experienced, you know, all the amazing things that happened in the 60s with the Beatles. And, um, and also, the show is going to be about anything that has to do with the Beatles. It won't be strictly a new show. But we never will lose sight of the fact that the news is important to us. And if there's a major news story to talk about, we definitely will be addressing that on the show. Some are much more important than others, obviously. Sometimes a news story can command an entire show. Sometimes it may just take up a few minutes of a show. But we won't forget about the news aspect of the show. But this way, we're going to be incorporating everything. It could be any of their... Any of their Incredible contributions the Beatles have made, their music, their history, you name it. Yeah, we can talk about virtually anything on the show. So um, we have complete freedom in that regard. And uh, the fact that we all have different backgrounds, although in the case of, uh, well, the four of you, I'm, I'm the radio guy. The, all of you have been more writers and journalists. Right. But um, we all have our own perspective on things and there's going to be contrasting opinions which will make it very interesting and um i'm really looking forward to it i think i think the two strongest things about this number one is the experience that the new guy that the guys are going to bring you know it's going to make exactly it's going to make it's going to make our discussions you know very strong from an experience point of view um you know i know alan 
Alan and I have known each other for years. Um, and, you know, he, um, I mean, we've known each other through, this is kind of funny, and I didn't, and I'm, I'm sorry, we have, I, I think I mentioned this at one point, that he and I have known each other back in the earlier days of, of the internet, when from like Prodigy and stuff like that, where we used to gather, you know, do text messages and, you know, and mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And, and I remember when Alan told it, was the first to tell us about the title of the album Flaming Pie. We knew it before anyone else because he had gotten it from a source. And, and, uh, and that was a, a very cool secret to have at that time. Of course, nowadays, there aren't really any secrets at all. I mean, everything goes out almost instantaneously now. There's very little. Uh, I, I mean, occasionally, uh, you know, I've had things that, that have not uh, been announced. But, I mean, it just really doesn't happen anymore because, number one, the Beatles are very tight-lipped, very, very tight-lipped. Even sources that you, you know, that you think will, you know, will tell you stuff will not. Uh, there's there's quite a bit of, I don't know if it's fear or whatever, but there there isn't a whole lot, despite what some people would like to tell you, that there is not a whole lot of stuff that gets out anymore. But we're going to have fun discussing the Beatles from an experience point of view, and that's that's going to be a, a lot of fun. And you know, occasionally we may come up with some, we may have some interesting news to break here. So that's going to be that's going to be fun too. So we'll see. And hopefully, and this is something that I hope we achieve, which is that we all learn from each other. You right. know, we all have tremendous knowledge that has to do with the Beatles, but by sharing our, our own opinions, and I'm sure many times we won't be agreeing with each other, but every now and then one of us will say something where where we'll think, oh, wow, I never thought that way before. You know, and when that moment happens, it's a special moment. And in the case of all of you guys, you've all done that for me. You've all said something in, at one time or another where I've thought differently about something. And so to me, if the purpose of of this show for some people is just to assert what you already feel, that's kind of boring. <laughs> if you learn something new or you think a different thought or you, you think differently than you have before for some reason and you gain knowledge that way, then it makes it all the more worthwhile. We all can learn from each other. There is no such thing as knowing everything there er, there is to know about the Beatles. You know, that's just the reality. We're always learning something new about them. And uh, that's part of the beauty of it all. Every now and then something will come up, maybe a recording we've never heard before, part of their history. You know, something something gets uncovered. Mark Lewison's work, all the tremendous books that have come out, especially recently, you learn so much more about them that maybe you never knew before. So um, I hope that that process does happen in this show because if it does, it's a pretty special thing. Right, You're right, and, and and you know that it's it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, all of us. Uh, it's going to be quite a, a panel discussion every week. It'll be like uh, almost. It, I wouldn't want to say meet the press because it's not all. We're not not all newspaper guys, but it's going to be a very timely discussion let's put it that way right and we're going to make the effort to make the show uh one hour long it won't be exactly an hour but it'll be close to it and hopefully there'll be a new show every single week that is the goal that we're striving for here and um you know it it should uh it should be interesting it it should very should be very interesting one of the one of the things that i've been real pleased with with things we said today is how we've stayed timely and we've been right on top of things we think you know the guests have been very timely we've had some i mean we've had some major we've broken some major news on the show and and hopefully that's going to continue that's going to be a it's going to be one thing that we're going to really work towards so yeah well the news is something that's always been important to to us uh, certainly, that's that's the work that you've been doing, Steve. Right. That's what you specialize in, right. and so um, you know it's always been important to me to let the world know that the Beatles are not just completely about the past. There's always some things going on, and especially when you see how active Paul and Ringo are these days. And then there's always something bubbling where the group is concerned about a potential new release or something that you've heard, whether it's uh, the documentary that Rod Howard is producing. 
uh, or um, the bootleg series, which may come out, you know, in, uh, before the end of the year. Right. Uh, all kinds of things could happen. The posthumous stuff on John and George, you know, the George Harrison Apple box set. Right. And uh, there's so many things, the McCartney remasters. There's always news going on, and we're just so grateful for that. Right. And uh, it's pretty remarkable. We've said this before on the show, and, and uh, considering the fact that Paul and Ringo are, are two men who are in their early to mid-70s now, they are more active than a lot of people who are 30 or 40 years younger than them. That's true. And not only do you not only do you have what they're doing today, but then you've always got the past, you know, coming up with whether it's a remaster. I mean, we just heard recently that Ringo may have his early albums remastered again. So those kind of things. And of course, anything that has to do with with the Beatles and there's always a ton of books that are coming out, and uh, hopefully we'll be we'll be talking about those and maybe having more authors on. We'll see. You know, it's um, it's going to be a work in progress, but I'm really really excited about this, and just to have different opinions from different people and who have you know different backgrounds. Everybody adds a lot to the show that way. Mm-hmm. The more different opinions you have, the more interesting it becomes. Right there we go. Did we mention by the way? Did I- uh, we've been talking about so many things. Did we mention that the the Harrison um, series is coming out on on uh, high res uh, downloads next week? We did not. We did not. There we go. You reminded me when you mentioned the the Apple uh, Apple Years box. Um, so uh, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna happen uh, next week. I know uh, one person I was talking with on Facebook this morning was very excited about that. So there we go. All right, so if you would like to get in touch with us, and very soon you'll be able to get in touch with all five members of this show, our email address is things we said today radio show at gmail.com. You can also follow us on our Facebook page for things we said today. If you want to get in touch with me directly, you can write to me at every little thing at att.net, and also please check out my website, kenmichaelsradio.com. And for Steve, all the many ways to get in touch with Steve. Beatles Examiner. Fill us in. Beatles Examiner at gmail dot com. You can uh, catch me uh, on my Facebook page. Uh, you can catch me on my news group page, uh, Beatles News and Commentary. Um, I'm just all over the place. Probably the easiest way to catch me is on Examiner dot com, on my Beatles Examiner page. Just look me, look up my name, and you'll find me. So there you go. All right. So. Chapter one of Things We Said Today is over. We move on to chapter two. <laughs> there, we, there we go. So, so thanks to everybody for listening for the past two years, and we move on starting next week with more exciting episodes of Things We Said Today. And for Things We Said Today, this is Ken Michaels thanking all of you for listening, and I'll see you next time. Hi, and this is Steve Marinucci for Things We Said Today, and we... We'll see you next time. All five of us. All five of us. Here we go.